for another income report. I'm not in the same place as I have been for the last few. I'm in the office today. I'm not sure if everyone can see it behind me. Um, there's an office, but uh, trying to do the deep work, but also trying to record these videos. So we had a record today, record this month, 44,000. Our goal was the big 40K. Our previous record was 36.5K. We thought adding another 3.5 in the month is gonna be difficult. And at last we did it and we overachieved by an extra $4,000, which I'm super, super, super happy about. I was very surprised, I'm not gonna lie. And um, you know, a few extra affiliate programs delivered way above expectation and that made me think, okay, we might be on the borderline. Then it just kept going towards the latter stages of the month. And um, the end of Q3 was a big vibe and we managed to achieve $44,096 from our niche sites in September. I'm gonna run through the exact figures and strategy and how are we going to keep going to try and hit 100k a month in this video? So this obviously only includes income from our niche sites. We don't include any income that we make from anything to do with this site that we use to host and write content on, which is increasing.com, or the personal, my personal Jamie IF brand. Um, so this is purely from income from these sites. I also want to say that these are revenues, not profits. We do have expenses. It's not just me chilling walking around with 40 grand in my pocket every month that would be lovely but alas these things cost money um we grew around 15 percent during the september core update which was a lovely thing to happen but um basically around the time the product review update was announced about a week later it came back so we're about even i think um it doesn't even look like we lost a lot of rankings but just other stuff is populating the surfs like videos more core and reddit and niche forums and so we'll have to adapt around that our plan is to get into video, become a more multi-channel brand, and that's uh, very much accelerated thought processes on that. Um, oh, which I've also written here. Google's fallen in love with Reddit, Core, and forums again. So yeah, it's starting to get a bit frisky with the old Parasite SEO. We're writing up strategies at the moment to start. When we're doing when we're doing um, research for keywords now, what we're going to be doing is also checking if any posts on Reddit or whatever are ranking, and then we'll put those in a list so the post published checklist gets followed when we publish something so that we go and hit every single like forum or discussion board along that's relevant with a really high quality you know 200 word post that helps people and also includes the link so wherever they go on that first page they're coming to us like we are the end stage we're the final boss of the content <laughs> um so when you girls are hit to hit sixty thousand dollars in november december the RPM is going to be crazy. Black Friday is going to make it crazy. The Christmas Christmas rush is going to be crazy. It's usually about double in terms of revenue. So we only need to increase by 50,000 based on the full we came. Um, so hopefully we do that. We've achieved above expectations. So it'd be nice to keep doing that and then um, hit the money and keep going. <laughs> so fingers crossed we avoid any craziness. There's usually a good old product review update in November. So we'll see if we die from that one. But I'm feeling more confident that we can weather those storms now. The breakdown is $4,000 from direct sponsorships, which is up by 400. We made $11,000 from ads. The first time we ever did 10K from ad, like just display ads in a month, a calendar month, um, we did $11,564, which was up by 2,500. And $28,532 from across Amazon affiliates and other affiliate programs, which is an increase in $4,000 again. We published 52 articles and republished five for a total of 57 affected articles. Our goal was 100, so we didn't achieve that. I had COVID, so I kind of was off for a week. And our total portfolio of views isn't high. A lot of you guys have more views than us, but we just make a lot from those page views. So 300,000 page views, which was a decline in almost 10,000, but that could have been from uh, the fake traffic from the Czech Republic, sorry, Czechia and um, the Seychelles. If you want to sign up to my newsletter, go for it. So what happened, everything was kind of effed up by me getting COVID. <laughs> it's very much so my plans. And uh, alas, let's run through the major goal. So our first goal was to publish 100 posts in September. We did 52, so we were at half. But if you include the five that we optimizing, optimizing can often take more time than actually publishing a new post because you've got to deal with the existing architecture. And the ones that get optimized are usually the ones that require like a really careful like um, editing sort of thing because they're just really important and they're usually the really difficult affiliate ones that require 10 times as much time as writing a basic feature snippet getting uh, article. There's also like 20 finished yet unpublished posts in Trello that need a final publishing check before they go out. If I hadn't had COVID, I would have published those, but I, alas, I was sick. We need to either take on more writers, outsource more, or find a way to encourage our existing team to work more, because even if with those 20 posts, we'd only have published 77, which doesn't get us to the 100 post a month goal. 
So we have plans for this and we'll update you as we enact the strategy. So if you're looking to scale up your teams, you can also sort of learn from us. Goal number two is to generally create more systems. We failed on most of this, to be honest. We meant to make video guides for our writers to improve our current templates and make them more easily communicating because if you just have a long fucking Google Doc, it's not really like informative. Like uh, some writers who don't have immense attention to detail will just sort of skip through their like this. And you don't want that. So if we make videos, hopefully it will be more engaging. Uh, we didn't do this. Create a link building system. We actually achieved this. We've been to do outreach as we speak and we've pivoted slightly to start building links with Harrow as well and another new strategy. If that works, we'll create a case study on this new and novel link building strategy. Uh, this doesn't really say actually that we are just doing standard like guest post outreach as well, which is the main thing. We just sort of pivoted slightly with a bit of side strategy as well. Implementing a writer feedback system for saving feedback to track growth and learning over time. Didn't do anything about this, but it's not a high priority. It was a nice thing to have, but um, they say um, what you need to do is eat the frog, which is do the most important thing each day. And um, if we're going to go and do the most important thing every month, this isn't high on that list, but it would be nice. But it's uh, a luxury rather than a life-changing pursuit. VA task system, we'll only take an hour, but we haven't done this. The VA is still busy with other stuff at the moment, so there's no pressing need to um, sort this. We also want to create a better system for hiring on Boeing rides. I think ours is still like a solid 7 out of 10, but we can make it better. Um, but we haven't done anything on this. We will, this is actually important though. We want to do better affiliate link tracking because despite how much we've you know, managed to earn, and I'm super proud and happy with that, um, we're not organized and we don't know exactly where each amount is coming from. So we need to become much more organized, hopefully get some Google Data Studio stuff set up for exact tracking. Um, and implementing a new internal link system, both yes and no in terms of succeeding here. Like we made some progress, we now have a system and everyone understands the system, but the system itself is complex and requires too much intuition on a case-by-case -case basis of should that link go there? How should I write the anchor text for this one? And really, a bulletproof system would be doable by anyone, even if you have more minimal SEO capability. So yes, we've managed to do it, but it's much more like, oh, what about this and what about this, rather than just having a factory style system that anyone can enact. So it needs to be simpler to understand and execute. It's too garbled right now. Goal number three. So I was really lucky to speak last month with John Dykstra of Fat Stacks blog thing. And he was telling me about how he outsources hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of posts per month. And I've spoken to some people and they've also pointed me some of the best content providers right now. So I'm going to try those guys out. I've tried some in the past. Like we don't currently have a service that we use to outsource content. Everything we do at the moment is in-house. Um, and we're in the mix right now doing informational keyword research we've already done all the affiliate stuff because that's what stuff we'll keep in house but in terms of just doing like low competition low volume informational stuff we'll more likely outsource that which we're doing the research for right now but it's not just a matter of going through like one silo like vacuum cleaners like we have more than a dozen sites and most sites have five six seven silos so the entire process can take a while but i'd rather have mapped everything out so we have an exact prediction of what we can get in terms of traffic and revenue before we start doing anything and if you're trying to do two projects at once both the research and outsourcing then it gets a bit convoluted so i'd rather get that all done before we start doing that we're tweaking our templates and sops right now which is the most important thing because if you don't have the good base you're never going to build a good house i very much overhauled our checklist that our team uses to create informational content boost in the last month it's much more detailed now. It used to just have like competitors, keywords, and then like the heading structures. Now, before you even get into that, you you have to list what can we sell the reader in in informational stuff. Because usually there's a product that solves their problems within even like how to do X Y Z. Who is the exact audience and why? Identifying the segments within those audiences. How exactly can we best help them? For example. Some pieces of content are more in tune with the list, some suit tables, some suit infographics. What pieces of content that we can add in to the overarching content, what elements, can really add the most value here? So we're building that from the, the bottom up, basically. And the last goal is to hit feature snippets. We didn't do any of this. <laughs> um, I'm going to build a G sheet for this so we can collect the data to work on. Like, uh, We'll have like tabs for current ranking, current traffic in the month. Um, which site, how many snippets there are, like as in how many reserve snippets there are, current ranking. And then we'll record like any change in traffic overall after hitting the snippets, any um, change in actual ranking overall, did, or did we hit the snippet and then assess the return on investment. Not just on hitting the snippet, but whether hitting the snippet led to better rankings across the board or anything else for the article and how much like the snippet actually affects the other levels of uh, the article. 
So our overall, you know, to look at it from a, take a step back, we want to hit a million page views by the end of June 2023, um, and also make 100k a month from our new size by then. We're at 44% there if you count this month, but I doubt that we'll hit that. Uh, if we hit 40 next month, I'll be super happy because a lot of things went our way this month. Um, so here are some of the projects that we're working on, and all of these are mostly, you know, longer term plans. You don't just complete email in a, in a fucking month, <laughs> like it's an ongoing thing. But these are the things that go from being a new site to a brand. And we're looking to really put the process in place right now where we stop looking at these things as sites and SEO, but companies, media brands and multi-channel. So while we haven't finished with our email funnel plans, we have made a start to this. We've added opt-in monster pop-ups to the sites and we each have a MailerLite account. This is um, an affiliate link um, because we think MailerLite are the best and we use them for all our sites. Um, by best, I mean they're the cheapest. So if you're starting, um, they have the cheapest platforms to have your first thousand emails for free. And then once you hit a thousand, it's the cheapest to be able to get those subscribers and send emails to them. And it's got a lot of great features as well. It's like MailChimp, the cheaper basically. And we use it for all our new sites. Um, but we're still not converting well because our lead magnets are shit. We're basically just saying like, get the latest info in your inbox. So we're doing like 0.5% conversion rates. Um, and to get that up, we need to create much better lead magnets to give away. We need to give someone of that something that people want and they're willing to part with their email list and join our community with um, for the benefit that they'll get for joining. We hope to raise that to two to three percent with these lead magnets, which would result in an increase of thousands of additional monthly emails. It's a lot of work to do up front, though, because you know it's not just creating one lead magnet. Well, that would already help over just join our list, get the latest info. We want to be even more targeted, so we're going to create different opt-ins that show based on the category of the site, with hopefully very alluring offers with regards to the category that the piece of content falls within to try and absolutely maximize the conversions. But you have to create, you know, at least five different PDFs if you've got five categories to do those things and uh, it's gonna be a, a lot of work. We're also doing the initial link building. We'll have much more to say next month for this, but in September we created the system that we'll be executing this month. It's mostly guest post outreach. So we're doing our first email outreach now and it's slow to start, but we're being risk averse. We don't want to get caught up in anything in terms of like sending limits and warming up emails and stuff like that. And having collected all the domains, emails and stuff like that, it will get faster. Well, and it comes back to lots of people on Twitter think the links don't matter. And I'm someone who's never built links before, so it'd be easy for me to join in and say that. But the reality is links are super, super important, but the links also won't rank you if your content shit. Like content quality is very important and links are also important and together they can be a very good pairing. Um, but we've kind of reached a stage for our big sites where no matter how good our content is, we can't really outdo the sort of DR 90s that just have such authority. Um, yeah, world-class authorities are prerequisite to even put your hat in the ring for some of these keywords. So we want to get there. Our current logic is this keyword can be worth 20K a month. We want this keyword. The keyword requires insane quality and insane authority. While I believe we have the quality, or at least we can get there, we don't have the authority equals we must obtain this authority. So here we go with the old link building. Also, draw the big money on a new website. In life, I just feel like you've got to put the money down. You have to put the big money down for top quality, especially if you want to put your hat in the ring for top results. And so, yeah, we may have got comparable results by going for 1.5 a budget cookie cutter factory, but is that what a multi-million dollar brand would do? And while we're not a multi-million dollar brand yet, we'd like to be and we want to become one, so it's, you've just got to invest like that. Um, and what would a brand do? They'd invest in creating the absolute best user experience that also optimizes for conversions for affiliate content, a generally pleasant understated appearance and experience for a longer time on page. The best designs you don't notice. They're just nice and pleasant, but not in your face. So they don't make you think consciously, which might lead to you clicking off the page. It's just an understated vibe that takes you through the site. And next thing you know, you've read the whole thing. Obviously page speed and also brand cohesiveness. Like we've got menus that we built two years ago, footers added six months later and whatever. So it becomes a garbled mess and you just want to have something that's just consistent. So that's what we're doing. It's costing five figures. 
but, um, which is basically all the money we've saved up in the last few months of being profitable. But I feel like there's few better long-term investments than you can in like the appearance of your core product and you know websites are a product, content is a product, and you need to dress your content and product up as well as possible. It's a huge amount of money. Though. I'm not going to pretend that I've got millions in the bank. It's like all our money. But even even adds two percent on our current affiliate conversion rates is a fantastic investment, and it will help with better user sculpting towards offers because we can you know, better spacing and stuff. The design is a signal of quality and therefore the implicit extra trust in the site to give good quality information. The uh, In my economics degree back in the day, one of the few things that I actually learned was that marketing isn't just marketing to like get in front of people. Marketing is a signal of quality because subconsciously, if you see a brand that's doing lots of marketing, subconsciously you think this company is spending a lot of money because marketing isn't free, especially billboards and shit. How do you have lots of money? How do you spend lots of money? By having lots of money. And therefore, how do you get lots of money? Well, it's not a reach to assume that you're selling lots of products. And if you're selling lots of products, you're more likely to be good quality. So marketing, in a sense, is a signal of quality because you can afford to spend it. And in the same way, excellent design that clearly looks like money has been spent on it is a signal of quality and trust. And so you, I reckon that you're more likely to convert higher value affiliate sales with a very good looking site. Um, as well as the actual website, the developer is helping redesign our CTAs and blocks, so it will hopefully look even better. Um, I also have a hunch that amazing design makes a site easier to sell and maybe even gets you like an extra month on the multiple, which would instantly pay back the fee. Uh, the plan is also to have it become a template so that our entire portfolio can switch over to this new theme. And then any future sites we start, we can just instantly have it there. So it's sort of like an asset that we can use time and time again, which would be amazing. And the last thing is, I tried to write this like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or something like, hi, my name's Jamie and I'm an alcoholic, but instead of alcoholics, I'm, a bo I'm the bottleneck in the process. We would like to spend a lot more per month on content and really supercharge, put out hundreds of things a month, but I am the bottleneck at the moment. I'm too much of a perfectionist and I like the quality to be good and I check things over too many times. And so I'm the current issue. I'm too involved in the process and therefore we're not publishing enough and we're not growing enough. And while it's served us well so far, if we wanna hit the next stage, it's gonna be very much slowed down or impossible if I still do this. So, the remedy for this is to be able to outsource the editing. Because yes, I'm a good SEO, a good editor and a decent writer. Other people can do individual parts of that. So you need to find experts who understand the niche to be able to pick up on any like misinformation or anything that's not expanded on enough, but who are also excellent with the written word um, to be able to quality control. We need to build better content templates for each type of content so that you can create easily understandable SOP so that even newer writers can more quickly adjust to the required journalistic standards that we uphold um, and without as much training deliver good content. Um, Thank you to Niece Sight Lady on Twitter, at Niece Sight Lady, for this one. She wrote that she has a VA who, for some topics, does eight hours research to just collate everything on the topic together so that when the writer comes in, they've got this enormous bank of collated data specifically for them that they can turn into a higher quality piece. Now, we currently expect our writers to do their own research and supplement their own knowledge of the niche. But I this wouldn't change if we did this, but I think just having this in advance would lead to higher quality content and VAs are pretty cheap so I think we may consider hiring a new team member to conduct this pre-brief topic research. Then with that information the brief creator can create a higher quality brief which will lead to the writer writing a better quality article which requires less editing and my less compulsion for me to edit which would mean that we can publish more. Um, basically how it was, was earlier in the year we were losing money every month because our costs were around 15k a month but our website income hovered in the 10 to 12k range. And now our costs are still around 15k a month but the investment has paid off since and we're profitable. We now need to build the systems and structures so we can spend the bigger money per month and build the structures to be able to handle that because it's all well and good outsourcing to 50 grand worth of content but without the systems to manage that content and make it better and edit it and provide feedback, it's a waste of money. So we need to build a structure to not just be able to spend this money, but spend it well and handle it well to try and hit that next 100k a month level by next June. But I'll admit, you know, I'm only 25. This is a whole new ball game. I've never worked in an actual company that's had like organizational hierarchies and managers and senior managers. And I have no idea how it works, how these kinds of things are built. I'm completely new to this. I've never had a job before. Um, so it's tricky and it's scary. 
but I'm also not content to stand still and this is how you get to the next level and so the required organization or complexity is a puzzle to solve so I'll keep writing monthly updates on how we're cracking this but it's not this is like a five-year job like this isn't a one month one so it's gonna be tricky next month's focus you know uh, to recap September was our best ever month um, and if we can hit 40k again I'll be happy a lot of things went our way, which is unlikely that all of those affiliate programs continue to do as well as that. Our focuses are, as you know, link building, move towards becoming multi-channel, which, you know, part of it is Parasite SEO. How can we get into Reddit and forums and stuff to be more on the search engines? And Sam is thinking about how could this content take another form? How could this be a video? How could this be a, an effective Twitter thread? How could this be a good infographic that we can put on Pinterest? Um, and this is the next step to becoming a proper brand is becoming, you know, not just writing keyword research that gets traffic, but not engagement because yes, it meets the search intent, but it's not viscerally engaging. Um, how do we create that kind of social brand viral content that builds like a big brand as well? Uh, and also just big lead magnets for emails. Emails, uh, you know, if we do get hit by a massive update, if we've got a list, then we can still have some income and, um, Science within comes from a more diverse set of sources to also get higher multiples. So we want to build that up and build a fan base in the community. So that's it for the month. Um, I'm super happy we broke our records. You know, 44,000 is a lot of money. I'm not, by the way, I still only pay myself like 1.05 grand a month, for 1,050 pounds. So I'm not living this crazy life of luxury. I'm willing to sacrifice long, short term. Uh, standards of living in order to keep investing and grow and I hope you found this interesting I hope you find the journey to try and make you know 100k a month interesting from these sites and know that I'm nothing special and that you can do it as well if you try your hardest and if you follow my YouTube videos subscribe to my email list and follow me on Twitter um, I basically tweet as I'm doing stuff so if you want to know how I'm doing stuff to try and replicate and build your own niche sites and improve your processes then I recommend you give us a follow in all those areas so yeah I appreciate your time for watching all the way through this 22 minute thing and um yeah leave a comment on how you thought of it i would really appreciate if you subscribed and then we'll go from there cheers